Hey up everyone, I'm back again. So I uh, just wanted to do a quick comparison review between the Moto X and the Galaxy Alpha uh, because both of them to me have very similar uh, type of specifications when it comes to the AMOLED uh, as well as the form factor both being quite uh, premium in the hand and both will set you back quite a premium price still because they're relatively new I was going to do a comparison between the X and the Galaxy S5 but I thought that that was a bit older so it would be worthwhile doing the Alpha instead so uh, we can put these two uh, to the test uh, which is especially helpful if you've got your eye on uh, one of them uh, even though the display on the Samsung is only a 720p I wouldn't uh, read too much into it to be honest it's uh, very uh, pin sharp in regards to uh, the icons etc and you, you'll struggle to uh, notice much of a difference really so uh, I'd say that uh, the display is uh, a little bit higher detail when you're doing your web browsing and things like that on the uh, Moto X but uh, it's not too noticeable it's just uh, nitpicking really uh, I think the Moto X's display is a bit brighter as well at 385 nits compared to 327 nits for the Alpha uh, so uh, when you're looking at it in daylight they're both very visible uh, but the X may be able to bump up the brightness a little bit more just to uh, make it a little bit more visible uh, but overall I'm very happy with the displays on both devices both of them are pretty much edge to edge uh, with the, in fact the Alpha looks uh, a little bit more edge to edge than the uh, Moto X so they're really maximizing the screen real estate on both of them uh, obviously you're going to get more content on the uh, Moto X because it is a, a little bit bigger screen uh, but uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, too much of an issue really you're getting a, a very nice display on both of them in terms of uh, the amount of content you can get on them I would say that the display, I don't know if this can come across on camera, but the display on the Alpha uh, looks a bit cooler, a bit more bluish compared to the Moto X, which looks a bit reddish. It's like a very slight tinge of red uh, on the display on the Moto X, which I don't know if you can make that out, but I think there's a bit of difference in terms of the calibration there even though they're both AMOLED uh, but it's not a huge issue you know as I said they're very high quality displays uh, which uh, definitely meet my requirements uh, the, it's worth mentioning that the Samsung is covered by Gorilla Glass floor or, which uh, should give you a slightly more protection against drops and damage which is very good considering this is a premium device you know you want to look after it uh, whereas the I think the Moto sticks with its uh, traditional uh, Gorilla Glass 3 yeah it's Gorilla Glass 3 on the Moto so slightly more advanced protection there but in terms of the actual specifications uh, quite familiar with the Moto X with its Snapdragon 801 clocked at 2.5 gigs and an Adreno 330 to back that up for its graphics and 2 gigs of RAM to back that up uh, for its uh, multitasking capability on the Alpha you get in a slightly different arrangement with the uh, Exynos uh, dual quad core processor or Exynos 5 octa 5.4 3.0 uh, which uh, basically is like two quad cores one for more intensive tasks and one for less intensive tasks 
in day-to-day -day usage, you know, you're not going to find much of an issue when it comes to the performance, uh, or should we say a discrepancy between the two devices. Uh, both of them handle most of what I've been able to throw at it, like, uh, you know, your app opening, etc. Although it is worth mentioning the Moto X is running Lollipop uh, compared to 4.4.4. Samsung still has to push out Lollipop, which will uh, enhance the performance even more. But even given that, I've still not noticed much of a difference in terms of the, uh, the speed of each device. I think Samsung did a very good job of optimizing TouchWiz when it comes to the Alpha. As you can see, some things look like they even load up uh, a little bit quicker. On the uh, Alpha. So, uh, I'm certainly interested to see uh, what... Uh, improvements the uh, mo the lollipop will bring to uh, the alpha which uh, hopefully won't take too long to push out because uh, to me it just seems like it's a much better device for your speed and performance compared to the S5 for example Uh, but overall, you know, you're not going to have too many issues when it comes to performance. They're both uh, very capable uh, in that respect. So uh, just doing a bit of graphical performance here on the Alpha, uh, which uh, I do really like for gaming because uh, it uh, obviously is quite uh, small and... Uh, very pocketable uh, and yet it's very powerful with its uh, processor config so uh, the graphics look very good the X on the other hand uh, has a bigger screen so uh, obviously making the most of that when it comes to your gaming which uh, leads to a more immersive uh, type of experience uh, but uh, I do find myself occasionally knocking the on-screen buttons uh, which means obviously you come out of your game and you lose your concentration uh, but uh, the fact that the speakers on the front is quite useful because it means that I'm not going to cover them up with my finger which is quite annoying uh, in terms of the actual graphical com performance compared to the Alpha very negligible in regards to any differences. I think the Snapdragon 801 and the Exynos is uh, they're both quite comparable when it comes to the overall performance of uh, each device and uh, I think that you're not going to have too many differences uh, but uh, I think there is a difference when it comes to the uh, battery drop-off. I've noticed a big battery drop-off when it comes on the Alpha when you're looking at the, uh, like the figures after you gamed for 10 minutes. But uh, another area which uh, is quite important obviously is the camera, uh, which uh, I've been out and about with both of them putting the 13 megapixel versus 12 megapixel uh, and uh, I have to say in terms of the results uh, I think I prefer the alphas simply because everything just looks a little bit more vibrant in terms of you know the sky is bluer the grass is greener uh, the colors are more vibrant and poppy whereas Moto X is look a bit more subdued uh, it's vastly better than what was on the old Moto X in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, clarity and the lack of graininess. But uh, I think that uh, the 12 megapixel ISO cell 
uh, does a fantastic job on the Alpha. Uh, they both uh, com capable of recording 4K as well, so uh, which uh, you know is very uh, forward thinking. Uh, shame about the lack of micro SD, obviously. So you are going to be a bit crippled there because 4K does take up a lot of storage. But uh, I did find that the Samsung seemed to focus a little bit better uh, when it came to the video recording at full HD, uh, which I think uh, the Moto still struggles with that even after the Lollipop update, uh, which, uh, you know, I think that uh, maybe Motorola needs to put their heads together and see why it takes so long to focus. But... Uh, in terms of your low light, both of them seem to struggle a bit on, on this uh, and uh, both are about comparable. I don't think uh, they both have OIS so uh, you're not going to get very good low light performance compared to you know your Nexus 5 LG G3 which do have OIS. The X obviously does come with quite a few different stuff. Uh, which uh, enhance the experience. My favourite being the uh, touchless controls or Moto Voice as they call it now. So uh, I can just say OK Dexter's Laboratory. I can just say OK Dexter's Laboratory. What is the time? Uh, which is very good. However, I've noticed that it's quite limited in regards to doing functions on the actual phone, which would be quite useful. Uh, for example, turning on your Bluetooth, I've noticed you can actually do that on uh, S Voice. If I just get it set up. Turn on Bluetooth. Bluetooth is now on. Turn off Bluetooth. Bluetooth is now off. Turn on wireless. Wi Fi is already on. Turn off wireless. Wi Fi is now off. I can't find a network connection. Ah. Please con you see, eventually I will need to intervene. But you can see there uh, that uh, I can do far more with S Voice than I can with uh, Google's kind of voice commands. I think it's come on leaps and bounds actually. Uh, S Voice was quite laughed at before, but it's certainly getting better and better. Uh, and if only they would integrate kind of like a touchless control system on the Samsung so I could just say on whatever screen I'm on and get it going. Uh, if I try, for example, turn on Bluetooth. I don't want to go to the settings, I just want it to be turned on. Turn off wireless. You see, I think that uh, there's still some way to go there. Aside from these little discrepancies in terms of the voice commands, uh, there is one significant advantage of the Moto X compared to the Alpha, uh, and that uh, is its uh, kind of active notification system uh, which uh, you know is a real godsend when it comes to saving battery life so you don't have to keep turning on the display uh, and I do like the way that uh, Lollipop has uh, integrated quite a lot of different uh, notifications on the lock screen for example uh, as well as when you drag down the uh, like notification area you get all of your Google Now etc coming in which is quite useful 
so you, you know you do get uh, quite a lot of value adds on the Moto X which are very useful uh, not to mention assist as well which uh, very good for tracking when you're driving uh, but uh, obviously Samsung gives you your S voice uh, as well as your S health to track uh, the amount of calories you burn each day uh, it gives you the nice little uh, air view kind of stuff uh, so that when you're in your gallery you can uh, hover your hand over and see a preview of what uh, you've done which uh, you know it's a bit gimmicky but then again it is quite cool to show your friends whose phones probably can't do that and uh, obviously you have the excellent uh, multi window so you can literally look for something up here and uh, type it in down there you don't get any of that on the X you know it's just a no nonsense kind of experience personally I do like those little additions but there are some times of the day where I just want to get stuff done and I'd be reaching for the X so the software is kind of like a mixture of trade offs really it just depends on what you prefer uh, you certainly get more options when it comes to the camera software uh, on the Alpha, which uh, you barely get anything on the X, if we're to be honest. You can see, you can control pretty much everything there. So, uh, lots of stuff you can set on, as well as uh, different modes, such as panorama dual camera very nice indeed the X gives you very basic stuff such as HDR touch to control the focus uh, you can also choose whether you want to do a 30 megapixel shot at 4x3 which I'm not too keen on so I usually keep it on the widescreen setting uh, but it's very bare bones as you can see you know not you can't even set uh, like uh, 720p if you want to do very low resolution video and things like that without downloading a third party camera so the alpha certainly feels more thought out when it comes to its camera app so we're doing a quick test here of the HD footage on the Alpha versus the Moto X. See uh, how each one looks. And uh, very snowy day today, so I've got to be careful not to slip up. Looks quite good on the screen. Check that focus in again. Wakey wakey moto. You see the moto is cheating here, it's not even focusing. But uh, there we go. So I think uh, the alpha is doing a bit better there. But in general, uh, they both look quite good on the screens. It's worthwhile mentioning that uh, in terms of Antutu, you're going to get a bigger 
uh, or greater score of 46,721 versus 33,137. Uh, but uh, I've not really noticed a massive perform performance discrepancy between the two devices. Uh, so even though the official benchmark does put the Moto X higher than the Alpha, uh, I think that the Alpha is a very well optimized device for your day to day stuff and uh, give those little speakers a try which uh, has the front facing one on the Moto X not a dual one uh, just one unfortunately compared to the one on the bottom on the Alpha me it sounds like the actual speaker on the X sounds better like more bassy and uh, meaty but the Alpha seems to register a high score when you're using the scientific instruments uh, which uh, is surprising but I think I do prefer the speaker being on the front because it kind of just hits you uh, as opposed to on the bottom which is better than the back but still Obviously, music's kind of hitting you uh, in the stomach, so uh, I give it to the Moto X for that. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, I think that uh, both of them have uh, some strengths and weaknesses over each other. Uh, I do like the stock build of the X when I want to just get stuff done, and. Uh, I do like the fact that you're going to get quicker updates. Uh, you got that nice big full HD Super AMOLED display, front facing speakers, uh, which I give you, in my opinion, slightly nicer sound. Uh, I do like uh, the fact that uh, you get Motorola's cool uh, software customizations and microphones over the device. There's one thing I can't stand is shouting at the phone in the car when the engine's on and the phone's not picking up your voice never had a problem with that on Motorola handsets I think it supports crystal clear talk or something as well so I think that the core quality is going to be very good on the X on the other hand the Alpha has certainly surprised me when it comes to its fluidity uh, for saying that it's a TouchWiz device, it set, doesn't feel like a TouchWiz device whatsoever. Uh, it feels very fast and smooth going into different stuff. It doesn't feel bogged down or anything. Absol love this, absolutely love this uh, chamfering of the phone and the design of it. Uh, and uh, you know, it really is a pioneering design for Samsung. It feels very ergonomic in the hand and uh, arguably a little bit more ergonomic than the X love the camera as well you know very high quality camera which uh, gives you nice high pixel wide screen shots uh, which uh, you don't get that on the X they do top out at 9 megapixel on the wide screen and uh, obviously I do like uh, the 
a new kind of experience you're getting on the device. For example, these nice these nice uh, sounds, which are very uh, uh, give you a nice little uh, experience on the device. But uh, the things that kind of uh, make me a bit uh, apprehensive of both of them, in fact, are the battery life, uh, which I still think is going to be a little bit better uh, on the X. I think you can see uh, for the duration of this video, uh, we're on 20% on the X, whereas we're on 17%. Uh, with the alpha, so you can see basically that the X has a bit more staying power when you're doing your day to day stuff, uh, as well as the lack of removable storage on both devices. Uh, that is a shame when you, it comes to your 4K and the fact you have to spend more for a higher capacity model. But other than these two shortcomings, I think that you know they're both very nice premium devices even if you're looking for a smaller device which is very premium then you know these are going to be top of the list really uh, they're both uh, coming in about the same kind of price now I think about 350 to 400 so uh, just be, able, be, be aware of the uh, trade-offs with both of them uh, and uh, you shouldn't be too unhappy with your choice so yeah you know I'm just going to end the video here I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative uh, if you did hit the subscribe button or like the video and I'll see you next time cheers